and then you produce Mark Boland's first yeah. single, The Wizard. How, I wonder how that came about. Came about, I was working by this time for an American guy called uh, Jim Economides, who turned out to be the greatest con man I'd ever come across. And uh, he'd found this guy, Mark Boland, or Mark Boland had found him. And Jim said to me, would you do a record with him? So I went into Decker at Broadhurst Gardens and I did The Wizard. And I always remember Mark sounded so rough and raw. It was real old fashioned rock and roll, which I really, I liked the sound, but nothing happened with it. And Mark, of course, went on to be T-Rex about four or five years later. But we got on quite well, but if you're not having any success with something, by the time his second one came out, third degree, that didn't make it either. But in the same thing, in the same Jim Economides office, having met Mark Boland there, another guy, aged 17, had come in to see me, played me a song called uh, Here Comes My Baby. I said, that's great. I said, what's your name? He said, uh, Stephen Georgiou, but I changed it to Stephen Adams. Now I change it again, but it's such a stupid name, I'm gonna change it again. I said, what are you gonna change it to? He said, well, he said, this girl says I've got eyes like a cat. And she said I should call myself Cat Stevens. I said, oh, seriously, I said, that's a great name. I said, fantastic, keep the name. He did, as we know, till 1982 when he became Yusuf Islam. And after much nagging by me and other people, he finally changed it to Yusuf Cat Stevens. <laughs> so he's had five name changes. Yeah. But when he came in and played me this song, I took it to Jim Economides. He said, ah, boob. That shit. I looked at him, I said, really? I said, no, it's not. I said, it's better than Mark Bowler. I said, this guy's really great. He said, oh, forget it, you see. So I went back to Cat and I said, I can't do anything. The guy, the boss, doesn't want to sign you. So he left and disappeared. The whole company went bust anyway. I'm trying to figure out whether I should take a job in Los Angeles, which I've been offered. And I'm sitting in number seven Priory Road with my wife and my two children are sitting there. And the doorbell goes on Saturday morning, never forgotten it. I went to the door, opened it, Cat Stevens is standing there with his guitar case. And he says, you're still interested in me? I said, well, of course I am. He said, I've been to every record company in London. Nobody wants to know about me. So I said, really? I said, he said, I've got a new song I want to play you. Play away, play me. Uh, I love my I love my dog as much as I love you. But as I listen to this, I thought, that's so unusual, that's really weird. I said, yeah, let's do it. So that's the plan, that's what we planned to do. And we did. So just going back briefly to Mark Bonin, did you see his potential at that yeah. stage? Yeah, um, I did. And what, what did you see in, see in him particularly? He was the guy, listen, you, have to, you have to be honest about the music business. It's like the story of life, when people look at a class of children and people say, the best looking children get all the dividends that people hand out. This is true because teachers and people warm straight towards somebody who happens to look really good. Mark Bolan is one of those guys. He's a good looking kid. So that's phase one out of the way. You've got someone who looks that good and everything else. Two, can he play and sing? Answer patently, yes. Three, does he have a hit song? And that's the biggest problem of all, does he have a hit song? If you ask me honestly now, after all these years, did that surprise me that it wasn't a hit? Answer no, because I thought the wizard was very freaky. You know why it was called the wizard? He was a Tolkien buff. Uh -huh. So he'd say to me, Mike, he said, the wizard. So I said, well, why is it called the wizard? He said, because he's there. I said, where is he right now? He's outside that window in that tree, man. <laughs> and he was gone. I mean, to him, Gandalf and everything else, which I didn't know because I hadn't then read Tolkien. But that was it. So that was the thing. But he had all the pieces except that, for me, except that one ingredient, the hit song. Cat forward, Cat Stevens, for actually. He had the looks, he had the voice, and by God, for me, he had the songs. Yeah. So everything slotted into place. And then, I'm just trying to get this in sequence. So 
you actually, I think it was Chris Bruff when you first met Chris Bruff. My Bruff. business partner. Yeah, yeah. He, he was the one that helped get the money together for the musicians. He did, and I blagged the studio time. You blagged by telling a bit of a porky. Yeah, I went to Dick Rowe at Decker and I said, I'm going to work in America. I want to make a farewell record, tears, tears. I said, could you give me some studio time at Decker Studios? Ah, oh, well, it's always very short on time though. He said, but I tell you what, I'll give you three hours and no more, three hours maximum. So just for old times sake, went into studio two at Decca Broadhurst Gardens with Cat Stevens, record I Love My Dog with a ridiculous arrangement, no drum beat. If you listen to that record, every record up until then, boom, chaka, boom, chaka, boom, chaka. That had dum, 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 da, 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 dum, 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 no, boom, boom. And I thought it was the funniest, the weirdest thing I'd ever heard. It was bizarre, but it was so different. I knew. Anyway, we had 15 minutes left for our three hours because they were very serious about the three hours. And I said, we need a B-side. So Steve gets up and goes, getting hung up on Dion smiles, walking down Portobello Road for miles, does a folky thing, Portobello Road, just him and guitar. So I said, right, that's it, three hours, that's it. So I went into Decca the next day with a acetate, as they used to call them, a first cut <laughs> of a record. And I said to Dick Rowe, I said, look, Dick, I'm sorry. I said, you know, you gave me three hours. He said, yes. I said, I didn't really tell you the truth. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, I wanted to record a new artist. I said, and I used it for doing it. He said, how dare you? He said, I would, out of the goodness of my heart and Decker's heart, he said, we gave you this time. He said, look what you've done. He said, you've thrown it back in my, I said, would you just listen to it? Just listen to it. Puts the record on the turntable, puts the arm on, plays I Love My Dog, finishes, takes the arm off, looks at me and goes, up to the phone. Put me through to Sir Edward, Sir Edward Lewis, the chairman of Decker, the big man. Sir Edward, would you come down? I've got something you'd be interested in. Puts it down. I thought, oh my God, he's got the chairman's going to bite a chunk out of me. <laughs> I'm dead. Sir Edward Lewis comes down, listens to I Love My Dog, utters the immortal words, which is again a Peter Sellers line, and says, my boy, you are a genius. <laughs> which I always love. Suddenly you're a ruddy genius. And says, this will launch our new label, DRAM. <laughs> 